All right, guys, so in this part of the tutorial series, we're going to go ahead and go over a couple of things regarding dimensions and uh, maybe some conventions uh, regarding dimensioning interior walls. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So if you can see, I've got this uh, model that we've been working on um, with a couple walls added in. So I added in these two walls. And I'm just going to go over, this is just for the sake of going over um, some, some conventions to follow. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually pick up our dimensioning tool. And actually, let me, uh, before before we do anything, um, we notice there's a there's an issue right here with the wall uh, intersection um, where the plaster is going, the gyp, yeah, the plaster of the gypsum board is going through the, uh, the wall, the timber, right? Um, and we don't actually want that. So we'll, we'll cover that later. But for now, let's go ahead and pick up the dimension tool. And I want to dimension from here, and I, I want to dimension the interior wall as well, right? So that the framers um, and the people when they're putting the uh, when they're pouring the foundation um, and whatnot, they they know where to um, you know make sure uh, to place everything, right? So that they they have the foundation in the right place, right underneath this where this wall is going to be, right? Um, so there's a couple different uh, conventions. Um, the first convention um, that I that I have heard of, I, I don't actually use this one myself, but um, the first convention that seems to be popular is to dimension from the outside of the uh, of the interior wall. So by outside, I mean what I just did here. Um, so to this sort of corner right here, or this where the the plaster ends, right, and then um, also dimension to the other side. So usually um, usually it's about six inches. Now we can see the dimension is kind of, it's moved. And if I want to move just this uh, six inches here, I can select it and then just drag it over like this and it'll place it right in there. You can also change the text size there. So if I want to change this to five point font, I can hit five and it'll adjust that size so that it fits right between there. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's, a uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways of doing things and it doesn't necessarily make it right or wrong, but, um, the convention that I was taught was to actually dimension to the center of the wall. So where the, the studs are going to be placed and the, the anchor bolts and whatnot, uh, on the foundation, for, you know, um, so this is one way. Let me, let me go ahead and delete this. I'm actually going to delete. Let me just delete this as well. Um, if you if you actually um, dimension, let's say let's say I'm going to go ahead and place a dimension again. This might be another scenario you experience. Um, so let's say I just select this wall, right? I don't necessarily click on this corner or or this end either over here. Let's say I just click on that wall. What's going to happen is it's automatically going to place the uh, sort of nodes of that uh, dimension marker uh, kind of where it thinks you want you want it to go um, sometimes in this case it's giving kind of put it um, here it didn't actually go to the outside for some reason um, but uh, yeah so th this might happen if this happens um, well you probably don't want to do it that way um, you kind of want to make sure you um, click on a you know some kind of node or corner um, to to make it uh, sort of well defined where you want uh, to dimension. Um, now, if we're going to do if we're going to be using the other convention where we're uh, dimensioning to the center of the wall, um, that's really only it's it's really only convenient to do. You can actually do it a couple ways, but it's really only convenient to do if you um, use the if you change the reference line of the wall. Of the interior wall, um, which you can do right over here, um, to the center. So, um, in case you you know you've measured, uh, sorry guys, that's my cat. In case you've already you know done some measurements, if this is an existing residence, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, um, okay, so uh, it, I, I saw that it moved three inches to the left, so I'm going to move it three inches to the right. Um, so that it's adjusted. And then I'm going to click on this node again. And I'm just going to kind of 
I'm going to go to the center um, and and we can see that that is indeed going to the center of that wall. Um, and then if I want to you know, go to the outside of the, um, the building, I'll just add another node. I'll click this sort of um, add dimension icon over here, right after clicking on this icon. I'll click this icon on the command palette, and then I'll just sort of drag my mouse all the way out to where I want that dimension to go. And then we've got this dimension. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and dimension all the way to the outside. So from outer, from the corner here, click there, and then we're going to go over here, and click there, and boom. So um, now just one other issue I want to go over um, regarding dimensions is you want to be careful that your uh, dimensions actually add up uh, because what will happen is um, in cases like this when I was, I was kind of just drawing the uh, floor plan at random and not entering uh, dimensions in uh, too precisely was um, ArchiCAD can get very, very precise with its measurements, right? So um, here it's marking this wall as 33 feet and 9 inches, but if you notice these interior dimensions, they're actually adding up to 33 feet 10 inches. Um, and the reason for that is it seems to be rounding these, uh, it seems to be rounding this case, this, this dimension here, up, and, uh, or it seems to be rounding one of them up a little bit. Um, and so we're ending up with this sort of discrepancy. So usually when you're, you know, when you're drafting, you want to make sure that you're entering in the dimensions of the walls as they are, as, they, as you measure them, or as you want to build them. Um, so in this case, we might have something that's actually 39, or I'm sorry, 33 feet, 9 inches, and I don't know, 7 eighths of an inch or something, or maybe not 7 eighths of an inch, because it, in that case, it would have probably rounded up. But you get the point. Um, you don't want to end up with these sorts of issues. So it's always best practice to just, um, when you're placing in walls and stuff, uh, make sure that you're specifying the length of that wall um, as, uh, as much as you can. So yeah, if you can see here, um, it's actually the length of this wall is 33 feet, nine, inch, nine and three eighths of an inch. So, um, which is why this this outer dimension stayed at three feet. There, I'm sorry, 33 feet nine inches, but one of these dimensions here is uh, getting rounded up, and uh, yeah. So just just be careful, guys. Um, make sure that you're again specifying the length of your walls when you're when you're drafting, so you don't end up with this issue. Um, in the next video, we'll cover how to fix this uh, intersection issue that's going on over here. So I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.